Hello and welcome. I'm George Cope. We're glad to have you today on Joy in Our Town. TBN is delighted to be able to share with you reasons that we can rejoice and give thanks that we live in Central Florida. It's not just the weather, not just the attractions. It's all about people. People are the real reason why there's joy in Central Florida. And we want to introduce to you every week someone that's bringing a smile to the faces of people that live in Central Florida because of the ministry, the involvement, the activities that they are involved in. And then we want you to know how to connect. If you've got a desire, a need, maybe you have a relationship and you want more information, we would like to be able to introduce you to them. So today I want you to join me and let's welcome Steph Carr. Steph, welcome to Joy in Our Town. Thank you for having me. Well, listen, your face may be familiar because I know a lot of our viewers are regular watchers of TBN and you're one of those that sing on some of the programming here. I do. You've been a part of this, uh, this programming and uh, TBN here in Central Florida for a long time now and it's a delight, but you, have, you do more than sing and you do more than uh, write songs and act and do those kinds of things. You, are, you founded a ministry con called Why I Count. Mm -hmm. tell, tell me about that for a moment. Well, as a kid myself, I was bullied quite a bit because I was extremely the opposite today that I am today. I was really shy, so I was the perfect target in school. And, and our home was a home for mentally challenged kids as a, as a, as a young kid. So there was a lot of name calling due to that, you know. So, so um, it, was, it was something that, um, that I, I was affected by to a certain degree. The only difference is that is I had an identity. I knew who I belonged to. Mm -hmm. And I knew also what my role would be and what my gifts were at a young age. So that was a gift, you know, just to know this. And the reason I wanted to really create the why I count is to really uh, allow the, this new generation also to realize their, what they're about, their true identity, their true gifts, and that they do matter, that, that they are part of a, of a, of a huge puzzle. And, and then when lives are lost prematurely, then we lose, we all lose out of this. We lose from the gift that was in that person. So that's really um, why I started this to uh, focus because the bullying is a real issue today. Mm. And, and whatever is out there is really not changing. I think, I think that anti-bullying is not heard anymore. It's not, it'd be, and, and yet it's affecting a lot of this new generation. And so the approach that Why I Count has is more to counteract the aftermath through the power of words mm. because I knew my identity at a young age mm. which allowed me to get you know to to find my way out of that chaos which was bullying a lot of the kids today they have no clue who they are right. so they don't know who they belong to so do you speak in schools and churches or wherever those doors open I do I do we have we have a, a we have a program for the road that, that is acceptable in every school. So it's not a religious per se, right. although it's based on, on, on uh, the golden rule, sure. right? And so, but we do it in form of different, different type of games we do with kids. So we do it in the school, we do it in Sunday school as well. Okay, good. So let's talk about this, this area of bullying because we, and it is identity as we see, yeah. but bullying in, in essence, what, <clears throat> what is it, how does it, manifest itself. I mean, we, the word we could probably define in our mm -hmm. brain, but what, what is felt by a child when someone speaks to them and they do what's called bullying? Well, we know bullying is basically using your own strength to intimidate someone to do something else that you want them to do. Okay. And it's a matter of controlling the kids. So what happens to the, the victim is that they, they feel inferior and they feel not worthy and there's a lot of aftermath that comes depending on what type of bullying this person has experienced. But you know, there's an interesting study that we can share in, in, um, in the school actually. It was a study from Dr. Emoto. He was a, um, a Japanese scientist that took uh, drops of water, took a drop of water under the microscope and, and would say beautiful things to the, the drop of water. Like, I love you, beautiful, thank you. Uh, and then when it would freeze, it would create the most amazing crystal. You could find this online. 
and then would take the same water molecule and say negative things like, you're no good, uh, I, I hate you, anything harsh and negative, then that water would distort and form like a distorted crystal when it's frozen. So it's very interesting what they prove through this is that verbal abuse was more dangerous than physical abuse. And if you take it a little further, you think outside of the box, right? We are made of 70%, at least 70% made of water. Mm -hmm. so, so we are the source of what we say first. So on this Why I Count uh, you know, uh, site, this is, this is a nonprofit organization, by the way, um, it's interesting, we have cartoons for kids. We call the boomerang effect. Mm. What you say will cause, or will come back, mm. which is also a line with the scripture, as mm. we know in Proverbs 18, 21. Your words can kill or give life, mm. and you will be uh, acquitted or condemned by your own words in Matthew 12. So, so we know that there's a, the Bible tells us about this. There's an aftermath, there's an after effect. And, and logically also, if you look at science today, where well, you're the source of those thoughts before they manifest into words. So of course it's gonna affect you. Mm. And, and so, so we're trying to do different games with kids to show them how they will be first affected because if it's only talking about affecting someone else, then there's less, in this very narcissistic society, there's less uh, chances of making a difference. You made mention of the fact that there are several types of bullying. Could mm -hmm. you sort of give us what those different types are? Well, as a kid, you know, we were bullied in school. I was bullied in school, but today it's worse because of cyberbullying. Cyberbullying affects over 42% actually is affected by cyberbullying. It's, it's the, the perfect platform really to bully somebody because it leaves no trace of identity. You could have a fictional name or whatever you can have to hide behind destructive words and how it's affecting the youth because it really gives them no safe place to be. Because, mm. you know, the kids, they live on their phone today, mm. right? The games and the Facebooks and, and uh, the Twitter. Uh, so now what's being said about them is now viewed not only by them, but by their own friends. So it's even more devastating. The peer pressure comes in the midst of it. It's, so, it's horrible. Um, do children talk to their parents if these things are happening? What, what's your uh, learning out there? Will they talk to parents or anyone and tell them that they're being bullied? And if not, what would a parent be looking for mm -hmm. as warning signs for their children maybe being bullied in school and they've not been warned of that or told of that? Well, well, you know, a, a kid often, it depends on the, the strength of the kid, right, of the intellect also, how he will perceive sometimes that he will uh, be ashamed to share it with his parent because then he's now a victim. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are like those emotional uh, blockage that he may have. So a parent would, would have to be really a parent and try to look at the behavior. Most of those kids uh, don't, don't want to go to school in the morning. So that's a first sign. There's over 30,000 children that avoid school each year uh, just because of bullying. So that's, you know, if you see your child not wanting to go to school, then you have to be a parent and you have to ask the right question. Um, if you feel them more recluse, you know, when they come back, you know, you have to pay attention to your child's behavior because not necessarily he will be the one speaking about it because he might be embarrassed. So it's how you perceive him, how the changes, you know. Uh, so it takes time. It takes, uh, it takes time. The parent has to be a parent. Yeah. Is this more prevalent in certain age groups or is it just seemingly like it's happening in all age groups of, of high school down? The high school down, but in college, you, you see it at work today, you know, I mean, we're not talking about just this new generation. Uh, people are being bullied constantly. Uh, we see the age group for suicide, for instance, we see a lot according to the CDC, which is Central Disease Control, between the age of 10 and 14 years old. Uh, in the last three years, the rates of suicide have increased by 50%. 50%? 50 50% by the age group between the age of 10 to 14. Wow. So, so what you're reminding us in, in parents, and that's why this programming is here, and, mm -hmm. and Seth, you're, uh, you are doing this, is because words matter, they and matter. they are now taking lives. And I guess we, 
And a lot of people, if you don't have children, another reason to pray mm -hmm. because our kids are under attack in that process. But that's amazing that, that it's risen 50%. You know what I, I what inspired me to write this? I had a, a theme song called Awesome. What inspired me was really Psalm 139, verse 14, where David says, I am awesomely made. Yeah. Your work's a wonder. If these kids would be reminded of just that, yeah. that they are awesome, and, and, and their identity reside in who, who have died for them, right? I, and I think that what I'm hearing you say is that if, uh, if bullies are influencing children verbally, mm -hmm. then the opposite has to be we as families and we churches and friends, it. we Absolutely. have to counteract it yes. by the positive reinforcement. The are there programs or resources or support systems out there that people could, could turn to for assistance? I know they can contact you at mm -hmm. yicount.com, right? Dot org. Dot org, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. And that'll be on the screen so yeah, that people yes. can see that. So Y spells with a Y, by yeah. the letter Y. Y, y yes. I, right. We try to be cool. Here. Yeah, cool, all right. <laughs> so they could reach out to you and you could help them in that process if there were. Yeah, we, we can help through, um, you know, what we decided to do this year is to start uh, to start a program to award some kids that are making a difference, that are faced with adversity, that are making a difference for the community by showing great love and compassion and making a difference. And by also awarding these kids, then their self-esteem rises, right? And so we've, we've oh, it was amazing a, few, a couple of weeks ago, we um, uh, awarded two young kids. One was nine years old in, um, it was in Quincy, Illinois. And uh, he has collected over 5,000 cans of food for the Salvation Army at nine years old. Wow. And a young girl, 11 years old, that's doing amazing work to help uh, raise money for, uh, for the um, different organization, you know, and, and just, she gave all her toys to kids that they need. Wow. So, so we see a lot of difference in these kids. So, so by honoring them also, it really kind of makes them feel like, hey, we can make a difference. We are making a difference. Well, Steph Karsh, you're making a difference in our community because of what you are doing in Why I Count. And we're going to have to take a break. And when we come back, Steph and I are going to continue to talk about these issues and the concerns that are facing families today. You see, TBN is wanting to make sure you understand as parents and as grandparents and as residents of Central Florida that there is a reason why you can smile today. All the news isn't bad news. And Steph is the reason why, because he's helping in schools and in communities encourage parents to support their children if they're being bullied. So you stay with us. We're going to be right back. We'll continue our conversation. We'll see you in just a few moments. Bullying affects over 3.2 million children each year. Suicide is the leading cause of death among children under 14. And bully side is the new term they use to describe this epidemic. Hi, my name is Steph Kars. We're launching a national anti-bullying campaign called Why I Count. Why I Count offers a new approach to counteract the aftermath of bullying. Why I Count focuses on the power of words and how they affect the lives of people around us as well as our own life. Visit us online on whyicount.org, spells with a Y, and learn how you can help us award the individual that is making a difference in your community. It is unacceptable to allow this generation, our children, to believe that they are less than what they are created to be. Welcome back to Joy in Our Town. We're so delighted that you're with us today. Thanks for being a regular viewer of TBN. This station is here to pray, care, serve Central Florida, and you are making a difference by viewing the program. Why don't you write in and say, I enjoy Joy in Our Town. I have reasons to smile, and we want to give them to you every week. That's why we come to you with this programming, because we want you to be informed and understand why there are reasons to live in Central Florida and smile for living here, not because of the weather, but because of the people that are making a difference. 
it's a privilege to have Steph Kars with us. Steph, thanks again for joining us. The first segment we <laughs> talked about bullying. We're going to take a big leap now, yeah. <laughs> but it, you said it was connected. There's, there's some connection in there. Between bullying and junk food affects on children. How it um, affects the mind. How it change, it affects the mind. Mm -hmm. And I, I, let's talk about that. So the, does bullying or the effects that children have in terms of what they eat impact how they relate to both their peers and how they act in school? Well, it does. It, 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 here's why. Your body needs nutrients. And if it's not getting the nutrients it needs, there's a deficiency somewhere. And then, you know, like even somebody who's lacking food, you could see, or lacking sleep, you could, you could see what's going on. So, so the food, junk food, for instance, has so low, is so low in nutri nutritional value. I mean, it's made cheap, it is grab and go, and, and uh, junk food is, is one of the leading cause of, of, of uh, liver issues in, in young kids and adults today. So it does affect us. You're saying this because you, you've studied uh, nutrition for mm -hmm. a long time, haven't long you? Time, yes. And as a result of that, you've, you've drawn in, because of why I count, um, the, the organization, you're helping then within the public schools to really train them. When, when students, when you talk to people about junk food, mm -hmm. what is their normal sort of response? Well, that it's just prevalent or I like it or... They're addicted to it. They're addicted. Yeah. Oh, that's enough. So we're talking about addictions. It's an addiction. And is, is the addiction because of the sugar that's in junk food? Is that what the predominant nutritional value is, is sugar? <laughs> well, the carbs are digested in the mouth, so they're uh, easier absorbed. So, okay. um, the, the real danger today, outside of some of the, you know, the, the, the poor nutrients, uh, high fructose corn syrup is causing a lot of damage. I think people are more and more aware. They don't have to study it. They just have to go online and, and Google the danger of high fructose corn syrup. They'll find plenty of information that's from different university and different studies. And, uh, and what it does primarily is that it, it never quite blocks that part of the brain that tells you you had enough. So it makes you want to eat more. So it's, 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 a, it's a vicious circle that leads to obesity in many ways. Um, first and foremost, a high fructose corn syrup is replacing sugar today because it's cheaper to make. And that blocks that part, so even more addictive than sugar. And what, what it does is actually uh, very interesting is that uh, high fructose goes directly to the liver which causes a, a lot of production of fatty uh, cells, you know, like triglyceride, cholesterol, mm -hmm. which is the condition is basically fatty liver. It's, a, it's affecting 70 million Americans today. And what do you find that in, that, that kind of syrup, that corn it's, syrup? It's, it's replacing everything, you know, like in sugar, you don't have soda, for instance, today. There's no more sugar in, in, in sodas. It's high fructose corn syrup because it's cheaper to be, make, to, to be made. So ketchup, they all remove the sugar. They're, they're replacing the high fructose. It, it's become like the main ingredients. There's so much of it, they don't know what to do with it. So they're feeding it. So what are the different types of junk food? Well, yeah, soda is part of it, right? Anything that, that is made fast, chips, chocolate, um, anything loaded with, with uh, high fructose corn syrup is considered um, the junk food. The junk food, right. So uh, when, but one of the things that I've noticed, because mm -hmm. I have three grandkids that come yes. to my house, yes. and so I know they're addicted. feeding. Well, they're, they're not just addicted, <laughs> but it's feeding them. It yes. is, a, it's more expensive to eat healthy than it is to eat these kinds of things, isn't it? Have you found that? No, that's, that's a lie. It is. It's a lie because in long term, it's a short term type of thing of thinking, you know, because in long terms, it will cost damage to the body, which would cost a lot more hospital bills, okay. right? And you look at this and I mean, you have to think, not short term thinker, like right. long term. You know, we see a lot of people today with medication that after medication, the, the lifestyle has changed. Right. So, so, and when we have kids that are diabetic, it's costing them at an early age. Right. You don't have to wait very long. I mean, diabetes, it, it's, it's, it's raising, rising there. 
So I'm a parent. Yes. So we're talking to people that yes. just the real world out there. Yes. So as a parent, uh, and I've got to grab my kids some lunch. Yes. And so it's easy to drive through the fast food yes. kinds of chains. What would you recommend a parent to do if they were going to purchase lunch for their kids because they're out and they just need to grab something because they're hungry? What would you encourage them to feed their kids that would be healthy and not oh. junk food? <laughs> That's a big question now. So. Um... I, you know, I never leave home without snacks from home that I prepare. Okay. So the old method is still the same best one. You, you need to know what's in your plate. Most of the stuff in the junk food you can't even pronounce. So how, how would you put something in your body? You're, you got to consider that your body is the temple, mm -hmm. right? Right. So it's mind, body, and spirit. If you think of it that way, if something is out of whack, then it's going to affect the other two, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to consider that the body is a temple. So from that standpoint, what are you going to feed your temple with? So it's going to be easier for, for you to find time mm -hmm. to, to prepare the right food for kids. You know, fruits, vegetables, always the... the there's nothing new here. It's the less processed. Less food. processed for sure. Um, you know, obviously, I would I would go over um, certain juice that you can buy organically um, made, like apple juice, mm -hmm. um, which still raises the sugar in, in a kid. But if you buy it organic, it's certainly less damaging than the soda with high fructose corn syrup. So, well, we realize we've got a problem. We, 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 we have a problem. It's a junk food problem. In fact, it's interesting. You're watching cities, New York City. They're sure. trying to ban the sale of these large soda fountain drinks because of the amount of sugar. Let, let me share something that's happening in the school system. Okay. I find this interesting. In the Midwest, a lot of the schools have adopted a better diet for the kids. Okay and change and remove the high fructose corn syrup and, and um, really change the, the, the food uh, supply in the school. And what they've noticed is that the, the kids are, uh, there's less dropouts, less suicide, better performance for, for, for school. So it, it's all been a plus, 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 just by changing the food. So obviously, the food you put in your body is what's going to fuel your brain. Right. So it's really, it's really not, it's a no-brainer, really, because it really is cheaper in the long run. And I, that was sort of the question I was leading to that you, you've given us, but I, I want to just sort of conform it. So what are the negative effects that junk food have on children? And then obviously you've given us the positive if the diet changes. Mm -hmm. So what, what happens, again, it is they have the inability to focus, uh, the concentration is very different. Okay. The performance is different. They can't, they can't focus. They can't operate. They're not being fueled by the right food. Okay. Um, there's a lot of crashes. You know, if you, if you bring your high fructose corn syrup, it will bring your body high, and then it's like a roller coaster ride for the rest of the day. So that's affecting your mood. That's affecting the way you're thinking. Okay. So. We just have a few more moments that we can we There's can so talk together. To it is. There's a lot here, this. and they can go on your website if they yes. have more information yes, yes. or questions. They can contact you. Let me just, uh, one final question that I'm going to ask you to talk mm -hmm. to parents. Uh, how do we encourage uh, children to eat in this culture that is surrounded by the negative? How would you encourage a parent to help change the focus of a child's diet? You know, it's all about how we perceive it ourselves first. A child is going to mimic what you do. You know, he, he absorbs everything you say, everything you hear. He hears. He, he will reproduce this. So I remember uh, my, my sister. My sister used, I used to give her vitamin C. She would like make this kind of faces for vitamin C, which isn't so harmless. It's just gonna do some good, good for her. But her sister, her daughter watched her doing it. And today, she won't, her daughter won't take a vitamin C because of the face expression that her mom had just taking it. So I think as parents, we gotta make it more interesting for kids to eat the right food. You know, it's our responsibility as parents that we need to say, uh, we, we need to make it, interesting make it look interesting the, the, the right food needs to look appealing and it's how we perceive it right. they will perceive the same thing yeah. doesn't that make sense though absolutely okay. i would agree well we've just got about two and a half minutes okay. left Steph. I, I want you to look into that camera right there in front of you and talk to a parent that may have a child that's been bullied or they're struggling with trying to feed their children the right thing would you just encourage their hearts as one that ministers to these children on an ongoing basis and then pray for us as we close? Well, I, I think our role as parents is to really uh, monitor 
what's going on in the lives of our children. And we have to be more present, more accessible, and certainly more relatable as well. And we got to make things more interesting in the way that, um, so that our behavior could be copied by them. And, uh, but for a parent, he really needs to be involved in the, in the life of his child in order to see what's going on. So my prayer, my prayer is, is for all the parents that, um, that uh, love their children, they, they all do. Uh, I, I, pray, I pray, Lord, uh, that you would receive discernment and, and wisdom in look, 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 looking deep into the life of your child and finding out how you can be a true guide uh, for this child. I, I pray in a powerful name of Jesus Christ that, that we receive the wisdom to make the right decisions, Father God. We, we pray for that wisdom so that we can be an example as well for our children. We pray this in the powerful name of Jesus to Christ. Amen. 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 Well, Steph, you have, uh, you've challenged us to think differently and to be aware. Mm -hmm. And so thank you. You're May God bless uh, why I count. Uh, dot org, and we encourage parents to go there. If you have questions or concerns, please reach out to Steph. I know that he would be available and would want to help in the process. We are so grateful that every week you choose to join us right here on Joy in Our Town. Steph is the reason why we live here. He brings a smile to our face, and we are so delighted that you have joined us today. 